Hey guys, Micah here. I want to talk to you today about teaching the triangle. Now the triangle is one of the most basic shapes and we're going to see, I think it's really um, fundamental to the way that God has shaped the world. It's kind of creepy the way it works out. But uh, the triangle is real simple. It's real simple. And the way, the easiest way to think about it is that God exists. We are a, we are a, Christianity is a Trinitarian faith and we believe that God exists as a Trinity, which is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we say that these um, uh, are one in being and essence, but three persons. And so if you've got questions about that, what you need to do is Google St. Patrick's Bad Analogies. There's a YouTube video that you should watch, St. Patrick's Bad Analogies. But for now, we're not going to get into that too much, except to say that the relationship between them is fascinating. It's not hierarchical in a traditional sense. There's not necessarily an org chart, but at the same time, the Father sends the Son, and then the Son sends the Spirit. And there's this, this natural thing that happens where, God, where Jesus says, man, I'm, I'm doing what I see my Father doing. Like, I'm mimicking that. And then Jesus says, at the end of the, uh, at the, end of the Gospels, Jesus says, I'm going to send the Comforter to you. And there's this natural thing that happens where... Um, where the Father sends the Son, the Son sends the Spirit. So even though they're all equal in majesty and splendor and all those things, um, functionally there is a there is a sequence, right? And so um, so it's just a hint. It's just a it's just a basic thing. But then we see the same thing. We see um, in the life of Jesus. We see this amazing thing happen. We see that Jesus has basically three types of relationships, right? He has an up relationship with his Father. Right, and so Jesus is always going away. Hey, I'm gonna get. I gotta get away and spend some time with Dad. Right, and so there's this up relationship with his father. He also has this in relationship with his disciples. So he goes and he picks people, says, "Follow me, be with me," and then they've got a special thing that goes on. But then he also has this out relationship with a hurting world. And so what happens is that we see in Jesus what we see modeled is that. Um, that he has this up piece, this in piece, and this out piece. Jesus really lives, in a lot of ways, a three-dimensional life. And so a lot of us are not living three-dimensional lives. And part of what this tool exists to do is to help us see, like, man, where do we need to grow to be three-dimensional like Jesus? Jesus was the most up that there's ever been. There's never been anybody who was as good at up as Jesus. There's never been anybody that was as in Right, and there's never been anybody who was quite as out. So, if you wanted to think of this as like growing close to God, this is um, like uh, there's an there's an in piece like community, but also it's really not even that. It's really about being formed. Who we are is formed into something, and then out. Uh, it doesn't get more missional than coming to Earth from heaven. So, what we see is that churches. A lot of times when we talk about churches. Churches a lot of times do not, almost never, do all three of these things well. Most churches do one thing, right? So what's a church that really focuses on up, right? Oh, it's just, man, I'm, we're really about, uh, maybe it's a lot of worship, or we're really just about, um, maybe there's a, there's a study component, or maybe got some Holy Spirit stuff going on, like whatever it is. Man, we're all about this. We're all about this up. Or you've got other churches that are like, man, we just live... For the community of the church. And man, we're just taking each other casseroles all the time. That's our thing. Um, and our we just have this tight little body. We're just a friendly church and we just we just take care of each other. It's beautiful. And then you, you have um, churches that are just all about the mission. Man, we're just gonna go out, we're gonna serve, we're gonna do whatever. You know. The problem is that none of these things end up being sustainable or able to grow if that's all you are, right? So the easiest way to see that is without. If you are just like, man, we are just, you know, a lot of the, uh, it's interesting, a lot, of, a lot of the mainline denominations were just all out for a long time, which is a, a great thing, like being out. But what happened is without the in, um, well, let me, let me draw it this way. Without the in feeding it, out becomes empty and, um, and burnt out, right? Like it's, you just get crispy. But the, even the in is not sufficient because churches that are just in all the time, what happens? Like they just, it's, they, they don't, they lose their focus, right? All of that has to come 
from this. And so uh, we actually see that this same progression happens with churches. Now, what most churches are not, like most churches that are strong churches at least, are not actually just one of these. They're probably two of these, right? And so you've got churches that are like up and in, right? So what's a church that's up and in? Well, you might see Whitewater is up and in, right? Or some people are like, no, actually Whitewater's this, depending on what part of Whitewater you interact with. So, man, we're, we're all about God, and we're going to study the Bible, and we're going to worship, and we're going to do all this great stuff, but, and, you know, and we're going to be real, you know, we're focused on us, and hey, we're great, but we're not really out, necessarily. An up and in church would just say, let me say up and in. We're not really doing a lot of stuff that's out. You know, what happens is we're not really reaching out to people. People aren't coming to Jesus. Um, we Are we making a difference in our community? Those, those kinds of things are out. Or you've got churches that are really up and out. You might see Whitewater this way, depending on you, right? Where, hey, we're going for it, man. We're solving seven and we're doing all these great things. But, but man, is there an inward component? Are we being formed, right? And then you've also got churches that are out and in. And you think, okay, like we've got this great community and we've got this good mission, but man, we're not really being filled with the power of the Spirit because we're not really, uh, we're not really connecting to God all that much. It's just like a, it's a social organization that's focused on, you know, on uh, change or something, which is good. It's a good thing. But all of these things have a weakness, and that is that they're not actually functioning three dimensionally. And so, really, what we want when we think about churches is we want to be all three of these things. Because here's what happens. Just in the same way that, um, actually, you know what? Let's skip ahead. I'm not going to say that yet. And I'm not going to edit that out. So good for you, Sienna. So here's the rest of the story. The rest of the story is that this isn't just churches. This is also every organization in a church or even up to a parachurch ministry. And it's also down to the individual. All right. And so you probably function in one or two or three of these ways, right? And most of us probably live in two and the third, you know, one is really good. We've got a second one that we're like, okay at, and probably a third one that you're like, yeah, I'm not good at that at all. And even in our church, we have people that are, that are like great at this, okay at this, not good at this, or people that are great at this, okay at this, not good at this, or people, you know, whichever way it goes. But all three of these to really live a breakthrough life, to live like a, a transformed Christian life, all three of these things are needed. Be, and, and there's a sequence to it, right? Um, I went to Cincinnati Christian University, and Dr. Dr. Cottrell always used to say, we're saved by grace through faith for good works, right? And so... A lot of times we want to put the emphasis here, like, oh, man, we got to do this stuff, right? Or if, I, if I do this stuff, Jesus is going to be really pleased with me. Well, the problem is that's not sustainable. You can't do that just because, like, oh, I'm just really strong and good at this stuff. That really has to flow out of this inner transformation of who we are. And who we are is not going to get changed unless it flows out of this really significant understanding of who God is. So what? So all of this stuff links back, right? So God changes us and in return, stuff needs to flow out of us, like good stuff needs to flow out of us, right? Stuff's always flowing out of you already. You might say that, um, you, may, you know, Micah 6, 8, my favorite verse, although I'm only 6, 7, so I always wanted to grow another inch and I could be Micah 6, 8. But uh, what does the Lord require of you, man? But, says to act justly. Well, how am I going to act justly? Well, to do that, I need to love mercy. Well, what's going to make me love mercy? Well, to walk humbly with your God. And what happens is you start seeing this structure again and again and again. Uh, there's just a million ways I can draw this triangle that it just shows up again and again and again, where there's a thing that leads to the thing that leads to the thing. Now, a lot of times when I draw this, I actually would put a little break here because if you try to go this way, and skip this, you burn out every time. And so it has. This is the sequence. Uh, we have to learn. I'm gonna erase this and start over. We have to learn 
to start with up. Everything starts there, right? Everything about our relationship with God, living appropriately, living a three-dimensional life, living a balanced life, that all starts with our up. From that, we grow and we're transformed in. I know that's not a very good end, but we're transformed in. And out of that, if this gets done right, if this actually lines up with this, then this should be the natural outflow. So you can teach that uh, kind of corporately and say this is what it's like for churches. You can teach it personally. Um, I find it's easiest to see it with churches, but I actually think that that it's most powerful when I think of it just as a tool for myself. Like, what am I doing? How am I growing up? How am I growing in? How am I growing out? Where do, they, where do I see growth? Where do I see change happening? You know, what, what's going on? So this is it, teaching the triangle, and uh, I hope that's useful for you. Talk to you guys soon.